guys, welcome to the St. Fotini Fellowship YouTube channel. My name is Demetra Scheifus, and I am here today on behalf of the Fellowship to talk to you about prayer. Before I really get into this video at all, I want to give a disclaimer that I can't possibly cover every single thing about prayer in this video, and I can't possibly give you specifics about how you should pray in your own life. This is just general different ideas and things that you can try. Definitely, if there is a priest in your life that you feel comfortable speaking with, talk to him about specific prayer rules and things that you should do. These are just general basics and different ideas about prayer. This video is also going to be a little bit long but I think there's some good wisdom that we've collected that we would like to share with you. So if you hang in there, I think it'll be worth it. We sent a survey out to our fellowship about prayer and most people said that on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the most difficult, praying consistently and often was around a seven or an eight, which means if you feel like your prayer life is not where it should be, or you're looking around and saying, I'm the only one that has a hard time praying consistently, don't feel that way. Everybody struggles. It's a path that we're all on together. Don't give up the good fight. So first, what is prayer? Well, according to the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese, prayer is doxology, praise, thanksgiving, confession, supplication, and intercession to God. So let's break that down. What the heck should we say when we pray? A lot of people get really hung up on prayer and they think it needs to be this complicated thing and that we need to have the right words, the best words, many words, but really prayer can be very, very simple. You could just say, Lord, have mercy on me. That's a prayer. You could just say, Lord, help me know what to do or Lord, let your will be done and not mine. And those are all very sufficient prayers that kind of cover everything and really get to the heart of everything that you could possibly need. If you're totally new to prayer and you don't even know where to start, set prayers are a really great way to start getting into a habit of prayer and to make sure that your bases are covered, so to speak. And there are a lot of prayer books available to us as Orthodox Christians that can help us with this. These are just some examples. They're not sponsored or anything. They're just things that I have right here in my possession. Um, there's things like a pocket prayer book, for Orthodox Christians, my Orthodox Christian prayer book, um, daily prayers for Orthodox Christians, or this very lovely blue book with a golden cross on it. Um, it just says prayer book from Holy Transfiguration Monastery. You could even Google online Orthodox Christian prayers and a lot of different resources will come up that can help you out. One thing that I've heard that I really took to heart um, was said by Father Athanasios Dresdo at an Ohio State University um, OCF meeting. And he said that as the Psalms say, we should always enter the Lord's gates with thanksgiving. So this can be very simple too. You can just say, Lord, thank you for all of the blessings that you've given me today. Thank you for having mercy on me or even just specifics that stand out to you. So you could even say, Lord, thank you for that beautiful flower that I saw on my walk today. Doesn't need to be anything crazy, just enter his gates with thanksgiving. There's a very beautiful quote on the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese website that I would like to share with you today. It says, how is one to pray? Only the Holy Spirit can guide us to pray as we should. Just as a child learns to walk by walking, one can best learn to pray by praying, trusting in the help of God. Put your whole soul into your prayer. Think about the meaning of every word that you pray. Make it your own personal prayer. Be persistent in prayer. Do not yield to carelessness or neglect. Strengthen your prayer through a lively faith in the Lord, a spirit of forgiveness toward others, and genuine Christian living. So basically, you learn to pray by praying. You have to jump in. You can't learn to swim without getting in the water. You can't learn to walk without standing up and falling down a bunch of times. So just start trying to pray if you feel like you don't know where to start. So this leads us to our next topic. But I always forget to pray. What should I do about that? This brings us to prayer rule. And a lot of people who haven't heard this specific term, Orthodox or non-Orthodox, are probably thinking, what is a prayer rule? You just said there's no wrong way to pray. Well, I will tell you. As I defined in our questionnaire, a prayer rule in Orthodox terms means a discipline that one has developed, a routine for lack of a better word, where one prays certain prayers at certain times. For example, if you consistently pray in the morning when you wake up, and before you eat a meal and in the evening before you go to sleep, 
that's a prayer rule. It's a routine that you have set up that you consistently do every day. And one anecdote that I would like to share with you, um, a monk named Papa Dimitri came to The Ohio State University um, while I was there and he gave a speech and he said that the purpose of a prayer rule is that it helps you to build up spiritual momentum. He said to think of the spiritual life as an airplane. Human beings' engines, if you will, tend to stall. We get stressed, we get tired, we get sick, we have a lot going on, we have a lot of homework or a lot of shifts at our job or we're taking care of our families and our children and we get stressed and our engine stalls. When an airplane stalls, if it has enough altitude and enough speed, it will be able to just kind of coast. And then the engines come back on and it writes itself and everything is fine. But if the airplane is barely off of the ground and the engine stalls, it's going to nosedive and have a crash landing. If we think of our prayer rule in this way, if our prayer rule is consistent and habitual, in those times when we have a lot of stress in our lives, instead of nose diving and not praying at all, maybe we aren't as attentive during our prayers, maybe we kind of forget one or two here and there, but if we have that habit built up, that will carry us through those difficult seasons until we feel rejuvenated and we're ready to kind of get back into the ring and start fighting our spiritual fights. Another anecdote that I would like to share with you, um, I went to College Conference Midwest in 2018, which is an Orthodox Christian Fellowship event, and a nun there said that you should speak to God even more frequently than you would a best friend. She said to pray all of the things that come to you throughout the day. So maybe you're walking to the cafeteria. She said, you know, say, Lord, help me to make a healthy, nutritious choice for my meal today. Or if you are in a fight with somebody that you care about, you can say, Lord, help me to learn what I can learn from this and to repair my relationship with them. Again, prayer doesn't need to be super intense. And she said that the more you practice saying these things to the Lord and talking to him about everything, the easier that it will get for you. So now that I've talked about the basics of prayer and kind of shared some different stories with you, I think this is a good time to answer the questions that were sent in when we asked our fellowship what they would like to see us talk about in this video about prayer. One person said, how long should a prayer rule be? Well, that depends on a lot of things, um, mostly what you can consistently and spiritually manage. A spiritual father or a priest that you feel comfortable talking to can help you with this um, in your own life. My spiritual father has told me personally that doing something very small consistently is better than jumping in with both feet first and getting completely overwhelmed because that usually ends up to burning out and giving up altogether. So if, for example, if all I can manage is saying, the Our Father prayer every morning and every evening, then that's my prayer rule. And anything else I can do on top of that is great, but I don't put pressure on myself to do that more often. Um, so all that matters is that you're growing over time and that you're doing your best. A prayer rule will vary from person to person. For example, a monk will have a way stricter prayer rule that's way more intensive than a lay person will because our lives are different and the places that we're at are different. So it really depends on what you can manage and the guidance of a spiritual father can really help you figure that out. Another question that we have here is, what are ways to stay mentally present or mindful in prayer? This is a great question and it's also something that I struggle with. I think any human will struggle with it. And whenever I find my mind drifting and I realize I'm thinking about something else or somewhere in the middle of the prayer, my mind wandered off completely and I don't even know where I am anymore, I just start the prayer over. I know that using the knots of a prayer rope, um, I don't think I talked about that yet, but in the Orthodox tradition, we have these prayer ropes that have little knots and you turn each knot over in your hand to help you keep track of how many prayers you've said. Some people, the knots of a prayer rope or looking at icons can help them to stay focused. So here's another question. This kind of brings us a little bit back to what the nun was saying at college conference. I have definitely wondered if nighttime is the right time for prayer and why can't any other times in the day be fine too. By nighttime, I'm very tired and most of the time I fall asleep praying or I can't even begin. The answer to that is you can and should pray at all times of the day. Any and every time is the right time for prayer. I think that praying before sleep is important because we never know what may happen to us while we're asleep. Um, so even if it's just a quick sentence like, Lord, into your hands, I commend my soul and my body. It is important to acknowledge the Lord and say something to him before you go to sleep, but 
Again, this is a great thing. You can work this out with a spiritual father. If you're like, there's no way I can do an intense prayer rule in the evening, you can help find ways to break that up so that you're constantly praying throughout the day. Um, here's another one. How do you start motivating yourself to pray in the morning? My brain is still pretty off when I'm rolling out of bed. This is a great question. It's definitely a habit that needs to be nurtured and that's where the rule comes in. The nun that I was speaking of earlier at college conference, she told us to train our bodies to jump out of bed in the morning at the first sound of our alarm and immediately pray. I got that advice like three years ago and I still haven't mastered it at all. <laughs> Some helpful things might be setting a reminder on your phone so that you see it when you first wake up, or maybe you can make your alarm sound a chant so that you hear chanting and hymns when you first wake up, or you could put your icons where you'll see them where you first wake up. There are a lot of different ways to navigate that and it will look different for everybody. Here's another question. How does one make a prayer rule a rule and also personal? And I think this is a great question. What this question makes me think of right now is that I'm preparing for marriage and a lot of people who aren't Orthodox have asked me why the wedding service doesn't have any vows. And I recently read a book called Building an Orthodox Marriage. And this book said that all the things that we would say in our vows are covered by the prayers of the service if you listen closely. Just because you're saying a prescribed prayer or a set prayer or something from a book or something someone else advised you to pray or what your spiritual father said to pray or whatever, or just a habitual prayer of your own, it doesn't mean that it's not personal. When you sing Lord have mercy five million times in the liturgy, you're personally asking God for his mercy. Just because that's the thing we do every Sunday, it doesn't make it less personal. But if there are specific matters that are kind of weighing on you that you want to pray about, actually most prayer books will have designated places in the different prayers where it'll tell you now is the time to say anything additional. So for example, in the pocket prayer book for Orthodox Christians, there's a page with the evening prayers. And then at the bottom here, it says, add your private devotions and intercessions. So there's definitely kind of room for you to play around, but I think that you can definitely still think of set prayers or prayer rules as being personal. Another great question we have here is, does prayer have to be structured? If you've listened this far, then you heard the advice that the nun gave about being able to pray throughout the day about anything and everything. So all prayer definitely does not need to be structured. But a friend of mine once told me that the structured prayers of the church, for example, the morning prayers that are set in the prayer books or the liturgy and all of those things, mold our heart. They teach us how to pray by teaching us to ask for God's mercy, for God's blessings, for God's will to be done. So while all prayer must not be structured, my personal opinion as one that is not a spiritual father is that you should include structured prayer in your life to some capacity for sure. Another question that we have is why are prayers so hard? I often don't want to say anything or do the same prayers over and over. I would rather just sit with God and be quiet. This is a great point. St. Isaac the Syrian said the highest form of prayer is to stand silently before God. This is something that a spiritual father or a priest that you trust would need to monitor. I'm definitely not recommending for everybody to sit silently and not say any words ever in their prayer rule. But if one is consistently trying to clear their heart and their mind and really truly focus on God and experience God's presence through inner stillness and silence, then that can be a form of prayer. And I've heard that for people that do this with the advice of their spiritual father, Looking at icons can help with that so that one's mind doesn't just wander around in unproductive directions because it's hard to sit still in silence for a long time and not lose track of what you're thinking about or focusing on. Another question that we have here is, is it okay to pray in the mind without mouthing or voicing the prayer? Any truly humble, heartfelt prayer that is seeking the Lord's will is good prayer. Another person asked, how can I pray and feel connected? I would say truly meditate on the words that you're saying. When I was singing in choir in college, our choir director was kind of scolding us a little bit about how we were singing a certain prayer. And he said, you're singing to the mother of God. Would you yell at her or would you talk to her softly and with respect and love? That really kind of changed the way that I 
was thinking about prayers and hearing prayers when I was in the church, really considering who was on the other end of your prayers and what are you asking of them and what are you saying and why are you singing these words in church? I think that that's a great way to get started on trying to feel connected. And if this is something you're really struggling with, you can pray about it. You can say, Lord, I want to feel connected to you when I pray and really think about the words that I'm praying, but I'm struggling with this. Please help me and make your presence known to me. That's a prayer. Here we have another question. How is prayer connected to our salvation? I read that it is our lifeline and our way into eternal life, but I cannot currently see how this can be for myself where I currently stand in my prayer. In the book that I mentioned reading earlier, um, Building an Orthodox Marriage, there's a quote about how the rule of prayer is the rule of faith. I think this is true. If we're not praying consistently, then how many times are we really thinking about God in the day? You can think about it like a friendship or a, or a relationship with an individual. If you only talk once every six months versus if you talk all day every day, how much closer are you going to be and how much more in sync with each other are you going to be? If you never talk to God or if you only talk to God rarely, then you're probably not thinking about God. And if you're forgetting God, then that means that you're probably not striving to mold your life to his will for you. In that sense, prayer is very important because it helps you to build that relationship and seek God's will in your life and live according to it. And the closer that we grow to him, the better for our souls and our salvation. So this brings me to the final two questions that we received on the survey, and they're related. One person said, how do people remember to pray unceasingly? And another one said, how do I manage to keep a strict prayer rule? Every time I try, I keep forgetting or neglecting it. So here's some advice that um, myself and the board have gathered from our experiences and the things that we've heard and also what different people suggested on the survey. Some people use reminders on their phone throughout the day. So this could be an actual verse or a prayer that pops up on your phone, or it could be something as simple as go do your morning prayers, don't forget. Some people said that every time they eat, they make the sign of the cross and they say, Lord, bless the food and drink of your servant. And then they say a prayer of thanksgiving after they eat. Some people, when they see emergency responder vehicles on the side of the road, even if it's just a tow truck or something, they'll ask God to have mercy on those who are suffering and those who tend to them and they'll make the sign of the cross. Some people, every time they walk up or down flights of stairs, will ask St. John, who wrote the Ladder of Divine Ascent, to help them ascend to salvation. Whenever you're leaving to drive somewhere, whether it's on a huge trip or just driving to work every single day, you can make the sign of the cross and ask God to deliver you safely to your destination. Anytime that you take medicine or vitamins or something similar, make the sign of the cross and ask the Lord for them to be onto your health and your salvation. Whenever you find yourself gossiping about somebody or judging somebody, ask God to save you through that person's prayers. So if somebody, I don't know, named Sarah, you find yourself gossiping about Sarah, even if you know that she's not praying, say, Lord, save me through the prayers of Sarah. And that's a very humbling exercise. Never take off your prayer rope or frequently use it. Put your prayer books and your icons where you can see them frequently, especially when you wake up. When you're in the car, Keep the radio off while you're driving and use that as quiet prayer time. Keep a handwritten list of every single person that has ever asked you to pray for them so that you don't forget anybody. In the books written with all of the quotes from St. Paisios, he advises to turn all bad thoughts into good thoughts. So for example, if your neighbors in your apartment are playing really loud music and you can't sleep, and you find yourself thinking, this music is so loud, this is so annoying, I have to wake up early tomorrow morning. Pause. And then say something like, Lord, thank you that my neighbors are healthy and energetic and that they're happy. Um, if they were sick and in the hospital, I would be really sad. That would be really unfortunate for them. And St. Paisio says, this is a practice that takes time and a lot of practice. We forget it for a while and then we have to do it again. So again, don't be frustrated with yourself if you're feeling like it's hard. And this list is definitely not exhaustive. It's definitely not something where we're saying to you, do every single thing on this list. That's not what we're saying. Um, we're just kind of talking about the basics of prayer 
and how one can go about bringing it into their lives more and doing it more consistently. I hope that this video has been helpful for you. If you have questions or comments or feedback, always feel free to comment in the comment section down below. We would love to hear from you. May the Lord and his saints um, intercede for us and help us with our prayer rules so that we may always grow closer to them every single day.